Hey, what's up, fellas? Doing this video for Joe over at SealerKing.com. He uh, has an asphalt company. They do parking lots and stuff. And he was wanting a better torch. He told me the ones that they've been getting, kind of like these you see here, are very fragile and they break really easy. So here's just a quick close up. You see, it has a liquid propane vaporizer on there that's going to let this thing run on full power as long as they need it. Here's another look at it with a white background just to get a better contrast. So, on top of that, when you're using these things a lot in the cold weather, their powers, it goes down quite a bit because you lose pressure from the bottle boiling off. So, all right, fellas, so here's a closer look at what we got going on here. There's an inner vaporization chamber. I didn't want to use coiled wire or coiled tubing because the heavy ends in the propane can clog up those lines after time. You have to use very clean propane to run that kind of system. So here is a better look at our propane vaporizer section. So we're going to TIG weld that whole thing together and we set a pre-burner combustion chamber on the back end of that to give us some extra heat and to give us flame stability and we're putting a cowling on the front of this to give us a good flame detachment zone. So here's just your basic breadboard configuration. I got this thing set up to where I can move things around and get a quick look at what that's going to do to the flame. Um, the first setup, not really too excited about it at all. We're pumping a whole lot of air, and if I turn the gas up too much, doesn't it look like it's burning back it inside the of there very much. Nice looking flame, not but good. Uh, it's not what I got in mind. So even with it turned up. I mean, it's doable, but it's definitely way too much gas, I think. I don't see them needing this much power. This is probably about uh, six to 700,000 BTUs, most likely. So I backed the uh, coil off a little bit, or the back mixer tube, to give us a little gap in between the two. You see there were the fire shooting out the back. And that gave us a little bit better of a mixing characteristic. We definitely had a hotter fire burner than the pre which is really important for this design. That's what I'm trying to get to happen most of all. This fire happened in this back chamber here. That's what we want. Because, after all, this is a liquid propane burner, specifically designed to work continuously without losing power. See if we can run a hot coil in the front. All right, so now I've removed the mixer tube altogether, and that I think what's going inside. on here for the most part is my stud is a little bit too big. Though. I'm using a 564 bit, and it actually used to be good with a 16 inch bit. And if the imperial system wasn't completely retarded, you would immediately know which one of those is bigger than the other. Well, hey, so here we go. We are uh, still working on way too big of a spud. Cut it off. This is where I put a back breather on it. How hours am I going to put into this damn thing? It's just got to melt some tar on a blacktop on parking lots. We need a combustion in this back zone. Yeah, things don't always go as planned. vaporizer, so I think we got it now. We're going to have to change the front a little bit. But. So. I've got a little bit of a pre-mix tube on the back of this thing because I felt like we still needed a little bit better of a pre-mix if we were going to get that rear combustion chamber going. We weren't getting any fire inside of it. But now we're getting a real good interior combustion inside of the burner tube itself. That's what I need to get this vaporizer coil to work. So we see that small flame in the back. It's not always uh and we're getting this bit hot shot. Coming. you got it. Oh, to see here. That's what I'm talking about right there. A little help plenty of heat that now back in. That should vaporize plenty of propane for us. Definitely what we want to see. I don't like the flame so much, it's not as tight as it could be. Do some changes, but fact we're getting this back going red hot now means we're headed down the right track i think we need to reduce the size of the spud so we're going to make that spud smaller and try that out first all right 
So here it is with the smaller spud. We're definitely getting a higher turbulence and a quicker mixing response in the back end of that pre-burner, which is what we need. Still not the best flame in the world. It could do better. We could have some better nozzle design in there, but I think that's good enough for melting some sealer. Okay, that's what we need. That is gonna make a good propane vaporizer. This is a liquid propane burner. It has a propane vaporizer chamber at the end of it here. And um, we're gonna try this thing on gaseous propane at first, but essentially to run it, what you would do is turn the bottle upside down so that we'd be running on liquid propane. So let's check it out on gas first. All right, so. You'll be able to see this. Whoa. Now with a regular propane torch, eventually the bottle pressure would boil off. So you'll be able to see here. So now we're gonna turn it upside down and do the liquid propane. It's gonna get a little crazy here for a second. We ain't gonna worry about all that. We're gonna fill that chamber up with some liquid first. There it goes. Good. Dude, that thing is loud. See here. This thing is nuts. So it's too late at night to test this thing out on anything. We're going to take it outside tomorrow, first thing. And we're going to do some cold weather testing and see if it holds up the way it's supposed to in the cold weather. Once this thing gets a little bit of liquid propane in there, it'll pretty much supply itself with about 500,000 BTUs of gas continuously. Unlike these other torches that uh, you lose bottle pressure pretty drastically running something like this. I just recently dried a bunch of limestone and pet coat with this thing uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you would lose uh, flame power pretty bad. This thing, the flame really falls off after it's been running a while. So we'll take a look at that. I'm gonna do another video on this. It's just been so long since I posted anything. And uh, I wanted to send this uh, update to Joe because it's been a couple of days since I've got back to him. Joe, I'm going to get you an igniter on this thing too, brother. I'm waiting on the parts. So this is where I am with your project. Just want to show you what we got. Hopefully it uh, works out for you guys. If you break it, just send it back and I'll fix it for free. I just want to know where the weak spots are. We'll figure that out over time. I don't want to just keep adding metal to this thing. I don't want it to be too heavy. <laughs> 